not as wet. Who knows, but I, I haven't heard anything. Ryan, wet, dry back. No one said anything yet, Lord. Okay. I know the technology we're talking about. I don't know anything about the situation. Okay, thank you. No problem. looking hot, but this is the one with the cork floor. Small bedroom again, closet, heater, but a nice big living room. Kitchen, fridge, this is probably the nicest, the nicest room. Connected to the old Hespers. There you go. And the woods. Window here. Window there. That's a nice big room. A one bed. Oh, and there's the pond. And there's the garden. Everyone. Um, we have a lot to try and somehow build together this evening. Um, we not only are here to um, inaugurate this birth of a new embodiment of this imagination that we call Hesperus, this presence that we call Hesperus, but we have this very wonderful uh, situation where among us there are those who have come out of their life to, in a very exact way, kind of midwife this birth process um, by coming and working in the art symposium. And we do this under the, um, the kind of the protective gaze of this remarkable being of Michael. Um, a rather complicated process is actually trapped <coughs> in the earth and dies and, and becomes united with the earth and then um, is awakened again. His body is torn apart and then he's buried, the body is buried. So the sense of, of, the, of the divine presence being able to, first of all, become human and then to directly connect with the substance of the earth. That's 
very key um, uh, mythology. So then we go from that to the next period, which is um, then uh, late, the late uh, dynasties, <clears throat> where for humanity in general, this is then what becomes the first temple-like form. So all the forms up to this time have been, you could say, objects in space. So this is the first time, and again, just, just remember what we've been talking about, that, that with the initiation in the pyramids, there's this instilling into particular human beings that they can have this inner space <laughs> wake up. Yeah, that the human being can have this inner awakening and inner um, this inner kind of birth of the soul. Yeah. And now you have a structure that begins to have a hidden inside. And, but from the outside, it's all walls. And as you approach it, it's this great um, pylon with this little narrow entrance. And again, only certain people could go into it. So if we go onto the inside, Next. Ah. So we come through into a courtyard that has what? Columns. So have we seen columns before? No. no. Well, actually, we have. Ha oh, way sorry. back in India, there was, a, there was a kind of implied column. Oh. Yeah? It was kind of like, oh, there's this something which is coming down in the middle. But it's kind of not yet a real column. Right? Did, did India also support something? Uh, well, it supported the whole, the whole <coughs> temple, the whole top of the temple. I see. Yeah. So but this is the first time that then we have this, this presence of the column <laughs> creating space. And this is, so the temple was, were always structured in at least three levels. So you have the pylons. And this is surrounded by walls on the outside. <clears throat> and then if you turn around, and look at the text. So then you're going into, so this is facing the other direction, where you have this sense, oh, there's an enclosure here. And this, there, there's, there's now, not only is there a courtyard with columns around it, but there's, there's a space that has got a roof above, and that the columns are somehow in relationship to that roof. So if we go to the next one. <coughs> So this is just a section and uh, coming into that space, uh, and it's much more bigger than this, <clears throat> but in, in the history of architecture, this is the most powerful expression of column mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? So when we have this experience that's kind of initi an initiation experience, in the pyramids, and I have this sense of my own inner light awakening, then what do I connect with? What awake, what's, what's part of that experience? Others. It's really the sense of, of a brightness. It's really the sense of, of kind of waking up to, there's the earth beneath me, and there is this you know, this great above, and now I can be in myself, and I can experience this. And what awakens then is this whole, uh, the structure of the body. And so what then becomes projected into space is to say, if as a human being you're going to awake, have that inner experience, then what supports you is this form, which reflects your own uprightness. Yeah. But also others. It's not just one pillar like in, in India. Okay. This is, you're jumping way ahead. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Which is good, because that's where we're going. Okay. <clears throat> um, so maybe we go to the next one. Yeah. Now this plan is, again, real, so this kind of gives you the picture. So this is 
looking down from above. Is everyone okay with this? Can everyone kind of figure out? So this is that pylon here. You come into the courtyard, and then you go way back here, and that's the hypostyle hall. So this is one courtyard, another courtyard, and then this is the hall, which has got the roof with all of those columns. So you can see that, that a couple of things. One is you would have had to have gone through a certain level of education, of cultivation, of soul, to be able to experience this. If you weren't prepared for that, you would not be able to, you wouldn't be able to take it. Because its experience of being called to wake up in the body would have been shattering. Because it was a completely new experience. Okay? And the other thing to notice is that you begin to have forms, you have, begin to have forms that start to come in and begin to kind of shape space from four sides. But it's kind of loose. Right? It's not rigid. But it begins to appear now. Okay? So if we go forward. Mm -hmm. Now, in the same time, back in India, <clears throat> we now have a new form developing. So if, we, if you just recall the, the Hindu or Vedic temple, <coughs> this is a stupa, which arises out mm -hmm. of the of the Buddhist perspective or the teachings of the Buddha. And it has the very same elements, but they're very, very different. So you now have, you still have this domed form, and you still have a base, and you still have this interesting thing up here, which I don't know if you remember in the, in the Hindu temple. You have this um, uh, element which is pr projecting up. And in the Hindu temple, it was, it's related to um, the mythology of, of Shiva, and when the, when the water comes back, all the water after the, uh, there's, a, there's a great um, drought, and all the water is taken up away from the earth, and then it all comes down again, that's the flood. And Shiva, uh, is there and allows the water to run through his hair, and that's what protects the earth from being shattered. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's the Vedic perspective. This now is the Buddhist perspective, and this indicates that there is a pillar which runs through the whole structure. And at the base of the structure, there also is a chamber which, in the, the Vedic structure and the Hindu structure has this image of the god. Here you have a, a, kind of a cubic space, and it was made up generally of, of large stones that were shaped like, like this. <clears throat> Don't like that. Okay? So it, again, is this approach of a square but it's open, and it housed the ashes of someone who was recognized as having the qualities, these, these kind of inner sun qualities. So now you have in the place where in the Hindu temple you had a god image, you now have a human being who has these special qualities. And out of that human being, there is no, an upright form arising, which is completely hidden. All of this is hidden. And you only have the indication of this by this up at the top. Okay. And now, 